Hello and welcome to Crime Watch Daily Updates. I'm your host, Anna Garcia. Alice Sin's life was just getting started when it was violently taken by her own boyfriend, who was also the father of her child. Alice was 21 years old and a Chinese immigrant living in Pinole, California, just north of San Francisco. She was dating a man named Raymond Wong, and the two had a little boy. She was also pregnant with their second child. Raymond, however, apparently had another girlfriend who was also getting ready to have his baby. In October of 1999, Alice took out a $2 million life insurance policy and named Raymond as the beneficiary. A month later, the 21-year-old disappeared without a trace. Raymond called police and reported her missing. Soon after, he moved in with his other girlfriend. Then in January of 2000, two mining inspectors walking through the Nevada desert discovered a mutilated body. It was Alice. And the killer had left Monopoly money with cryptic notes on it by the body. Detectives searched Raymond's home and found violent videos portraying torture and sexual assault, as well as child pornography. He was arrested and convicted in 2001 on the child porn-related charges, and then he spent two years in prison. Then he fled to China, and detectives hit a real roadblock in trying to solve Alice's case. While in China, Raymond apparently contacted American federal officials and said that he could work as a spy for the United States. Officials reportedly played along, and that's when he was arrested when he arrived back in San Francisco on December 19th of 2011 for failing to register as a sex offender. He was released from custody, but detectives worked to find incriminating evidence against him, and they got that in none other than Raymond's other girlfriend, Jessica Tang. She admitted to helping lure Alice to the desert and ultimately shooting her after Raymond had. She later pleaded guilty to conspiracy after the fact. Pinole police arrested Raymond on December 24th of 2011 on suspicion of killing Alice. He went on trial in 2015 and was convicted of murder. A judge sentenced him to 50 years to life in prison. He appealed the conviction, and in 2018, the California Court of Appeals upheld the lower court's ruling. He is serving his sentence at a prison in San Diego. Let's look back at the heartbreaking case of a young mother whose bright future was extinguished by a man she trusted. 21-year-old mother Alice Sin. Her sweet smile, her warm spirit, captured in dozens of family photos. She loved her parents. Um, she so appreciated their bringing her to the United States and the opportunities that that gave her. Alice, a native of China, lives in the city of Penn Knoll, just northeast of San Francisco. She raises her infant son while taking classes at a community college. Alice was poised on the brink of Really finding her power, becoming a mother, was a truly significant event in her life. Prosecutor Mary Knox feels as though she knows Alice personally. But the grim reality is she's working Alice's murder case. Along a stretch of the dusty Nevada desert east of Reno, two mining inspectors reportedly discover a woman's mutilated and bullet-ridden corpse half buried in the sand. She was brutally murdered, and then her body was, was defaced. There were obvious badger eating marks on her body uh, where she had been clawed open from um, the animals that were out there. Dental records later identify the victim as Alice Sin. At the scene, her killer can only be identified by a few cryptic clues. There was uh, Monopoly money that had been stuffed into Alice's pockets and also kind of just spread through the, the badger den and in the dirt. Written on that play money, the acronyms NWO and ZOG. The initials stand for New World Order and Zionist Occupied Government, which are white supremacist groups. How did this innocent young mother, Alice, end up in this strange and horrifying condition in the desert, some 200 miles away from her home? Was Alice's murder some type of strange hate crime? When you have someone that takes their time to mutilate a body afterwards, I believe it's a display of a lot of hatred for that person. Detectives dig into Alice's personal life, looking for answers. She was a wonderful friend and was very thoughtful about her relationships with people. 
There they find Alice's live-in boyfriend, 28-year-old tech consultant Raymond Wong, the father of Alice's child. Raymond was a very smart college graduate, owned a couple homes, just did very well for himself. His parents had immigrated here from Hong Kong. And he began dating her while she was a student at UC Davis. But Alice's college love affair was soon headed for a bitter lesson and some fierce competition. Cops say Raymond cheated on her with his on-again, off-again girlfriend, 25-year-old Jessica Tang. Jessica and Alice hate each other. They were aware of each other. Adding even more drama to an already torrid love triangle. Both women are pregnant with Raymond's babies. Alice wrote Raymond a letter saying that she knew he was seeing Jessica again um, and that Alice and Raymond needed to work out a relationship so that they could raise their baby together. That would never happen. Late November in Pendle, just days before Thanksgiving, Raymond calls police, telling them Alice is missing. But as detectives comb the city looking for the young mom, they become suspicious. As her friends had described, you know, she loved her child. She would have never just up and left and left the child with Raymond. Cops soon discover Alice's car left abandoned in a local shopping center parking lot. And shockingly, a $2 million life insurance policy Alice applied for, naming Raymond as her beneficiary. Then there's the other woman, Jessica Tang, who investigators say moved in with Raymond only days after Alice goes missing. Alice's clothing was moved from their bedroom. It was packaged up in garbage bags that were in the garage. Detectives wonder, does Raymond know more about Alice's disappearance than he's letting on? He says no and agrees to a polygraph test to prove it. Close your eyes and relax and just, just be comfortable. Do you know what happened to Alice? No. Are you lying about what happened to Alice? No. Raymond put himself through a polygraph, which he failed horribly. I think it came back as inconclusive, but that he had lied during certain parts of it. But cops know a failed polygraph is not enough to arrest Raymond Wong, now a prime suspect. It takes evidence and patience. Both were about to surface. Okay, we're leaving the body site where the murder occurred. Just two months after questioning Raymond, police find Alice's decomposed body in the Nevada desert. An autopsy confirms the heartbreaking reality. Alice was pregnant with Raymond's second child. Then, gruesome details of her death make cops even more suspicious about who viciously killed her. Her uterus had been removed. Um, which was important as uh, Alice was four months pregnant at the time that she was killed. The baby had been taken out of her body. Very sick and disgusting. Now, armed with a warrant to search Raymond's home, detectives make a disturbing discovery. There were literally thousands of hours of snuff videos recovered from Raymond Wong's computer that depicted women being killed and brutalized, um, tortured, and sexually assaulted. Some images involving children. Purely sadistic. He enjoyed inflicting pain. He enjoyed seeing other people inflict pain to others. Prosecutors are able to arrest and lock up Raymond Wong on child pornography charges. But with no direct physical evidence tying him to Alice Sin's brutal death, they hit a roadblock in the murder case. This case was challenging in that it depended on thousands of very small pieces of circumstantial evidence to create the whole picture. And the picture was about to blur. Before cops could nab their killer, Raymond Wong, now released from prison, escapes felony violations of state sex offender registration laws and quickly disappears. He fled the country to China. He was in China for three and a half years. He was going to beat the case and he was going to get out and be a free man. Almost a decade passes. Alice's savage murder goes unpunished. But now, cold case detectives could be on the verge of catching a major break, all thanks to Raymond's very own slip-up. He had approached the CIA and the FBI in Beijing, offering to work as a spy for the United States. 21-year-old Alice Sin's bullet-ridden and pregnant mutilated body has been found in the dry Nevada desert.
She'd had acid thrown on her face. Um, her hair had been scalped. Her body had been um, disposed of over an animal badger den. Cops feel certain they know who committed the horrifying act. Raymond Wong, the father of Alice's child. Wong was the one who reported Alice missing. And now he is too. He fled the country to China. Detectives have a cold case on their hands, but it's about to heat up. I think I was sitting at home and I got a phone call uh, from work, from dispatch, and they said, hey, uh, the uh, FBI is on the phone and they think that they have Raymond Wong in custody at SFO. And I was like, whoop, I'll be right in. The elusive Wong has been nabbed on a fake passport at the San Francisco airport. Turns out the brazen killer had schemed an elaborate cover-up to work as an international double spy and return to the United States. He had approached the CIA and the FBI in Beijing, offering to work as a spy for the United States. They sort of hoodwinked Raymond and told him, oh, we'd love to work with you. He was coming through customs, basically trying to say that he was contacted by um, the Chinese Secret Service. He wanted to work as a double agent for the United States, but he had to prove he could come in and out of the US freely. With only so much time before Raymond's free again, detectives need to move fast to secure a murder case. In a stealthy move, Detective Timothy Caldwell's reaches out to the other woman in Raymond's life. Jessica Tang. And now, nearly a dozen years after Alice's death, cops desperately need her to talk. It was one of the hardest interviews I'd, I'd ever had in my almost 14 year career as a police officer. And she didn't have Raymond in her life anymore, which was key for, for the interview. Investigators could not release Jessica's actual interview video to Crime Watch Daily, but Detective Caldwell says he grilled the woman who was Wong's other lover at the time over many days. Finally, she breaks and begins to tell what happened to Alice on that autumn day long ago. He drove her and Alice up to the middle of the desert in uh, Churchill County, Nevada. Amazingly, cops learned Wong got both women into the car by convincing each girlfriend they were going to take the other one out. The plan was hatched for Raymond to tell Alice that they were going to take Jessica up to the desert and kill her, but the actual plan was to murder Alice. Jessica really knew what was about to go down. During the car ride, um, she basically said she sat back that Raymond and Alice um, argued almost the entire time up to Nevada. Along the way, police say Raymond pulls into a rest stop. Witnesses would later confirm seeing the threesome. The people who worked at the rest stop identified both Raymond and Alice as being there and identified another Asian woman sitting in the car, but they, they couldn't get a good look at her. Raymond later drives to a secluded spot off the road and parks. Jessica says he and Alice got out of the car and they're arguing. She said Raymond told her to stay in the car that Raymond and Alice got to, went to the back, um, and then she heard the gunshots and she saw the body fall. Raymond then forces Jessica out of the back seat. He puts the gun in her hand, says, you have to shoot her too. So she says that she just turned her head and she shot once, and she didn't want Raymond to kill her for refusing, so she did it. Jessica says she gets back into the car, but Raymond does not. Police believe that's when Raymond callously acts out his snuff fantasies, mutilating the body. Purely sadistic. He enjoyed inflicting pain. And then leaving fake clues. She described him throwing papers around the body. It was the Monopoly money found around Alice with those white supremacist initials, apparently only placed as part of Raymond's scheme to throw police off his trail. Detectives later learned that Raymond sent a bogus message to the news media to try and make it look like a hate group killed Alice. An email was sent to all of the San Francisco Bay Area news groups um, from the Aryan Knights claiming responsibility for Alice's murder. They were able to track the IP address back to the uh, internet cafe in Calgary. Investigators discover Raymond was there on business at the time. Police find other compelling evidence on Raymond's home computer. He was looking for driving directions to the Nevada desert. He was calling different gun stores and he was actively researching two white supremacist organizations. He's a monster. Uh, he's pure evil hidden behind a guise of a normal person. Jessica's confession about what happened that night is the crucial link cops needed most. Investigators finally put Raymond Wong in handcuffs. 
You're under arrest for the murder of Alice Sin. Yeah, turn, around. turn around, put your hands behind your back. I drove him out to county jail. Halfway out there, he said, hey, you know, when all this is over and I'm out, you know, we should go get a beer together. And I said, no, I don't think I'd, I'd like to hang out with you. Prosecutors build their case against Raymond. As for Jessica Tang. She ultimately pled guilty to being a conspirator um, after the fact, given um, some very significant cardiac issues that she has. She was placed on five years of felony probation. Her testimony sealed the fate of Raymond Wong. The jury convicted him of first degree murder. He was sentenced to 50 years to life in prison. Raymond's exactly where he deserves to be, behind bars to where he can't hurt another woman again. A bittersweet justice for the young mother, Alice Sin, unaware of the monster she had loved. This tremendous opportunity that was in front of Alice to have really, I think, what would have been an incredible life, just taken for such senseless reasons.